Hello, my name is Dr. Njoro Karanjo. Today we are partnering with Ponea Health and uh, we're going to tackle a simple subject on um, intestinal obstruction. Basically, this is um, a blockage in the normal passage of stool through the digestive tract, basically from the mouth all the way to the, uh, to the anal region. Normally, has um, can be categorized by five major things. Either you have uh, adhesions, which is basically when your gut combined and sticks together, or you have a tumor, which is something that's growing inside the abdomen. You can have uh, intersusception. You can have a hernia or a volvulus, which I'll tackle all of them slowly. So adhesions, which is normally the general cause, um, the major cause of intestinal obstruction, is found in patients who've had prior surgeries on the abdomen region, where due to the injury of the, of the gut, when you are healing, the intestines tend to agamate and combine to come together, and thus as it normally stops or compresses another part of the intestine leading to mechanical obstruction. But in the home setup, um, a thing we see often is uh, intersusceptions, which is normally seen in children between the ages of six months to two years. Normally these children are healthy, well-fed babies, who present with abdominal pains, they have this cramping pain where the gut, they have a cramping abdominal pain, they have fevers, they have diarrhea, they vomit. And the most characteristic thing about this is that on their stool, when they go, when you're changing their diaper or you're looking at their stool, changing their diaper or their um, nappy or their um, or panty, whatever they're wearing, you find that they have something called red current jelly stool. Red, the redness comes from blood because it tends to bleed a bit. The, the current jelly is like the thing that you apply on your bread, if you uh, like strawberry jam, whatever. That's the texture and the color that they have. So an intersusception is basically where one part of the gut telescopes into another. I'm sure you've seen a telescope how when you, pro when you remove it, so when you're putting it back, so the gut, one part of the gut gets into another and gets swallowed in, and thus stool cannot pass through. Now, all these five things I've spoken about for the types of intestinal obstruction have to do, they're managed surgically. So patients, as I said, will normally come with abdominal pain, they'll have the diarrhea, they'll be vomiting. These conditions are normally managed in a hospital setting. They come in, they're seen in the clinic, uh, normally get admitted, and we tend now to resolve whatever surgical complication that has arisen from what the pending cause of um, the intestinal obstruction. Once dealt with, the patients are successfully discharged home. Now, uh, another common complaint that we see in our surgical fields are um, hemorrhoids. Now, these ones can, there are two types. You have internal and external hemorrhoids. The internal hemorrhoids are not, the complaints are not as common as one would expect, normally seen in pregnant ladies or people who are obese or have done heavy lifting and which work basically requires an increase in the abdominal pressure where they have to compress their abdominal muscles a lot. So the major complaint of this is basically when the patient goes to wipe themselves, they find that their tissue is blood stained. Uh, they might also see masses around the anal region that uh, basically are bulging veins that have become uh, blocked with blood, they become basically thrombosed. The management for hemorrhoids is quite simple. So it can be done in three ways. There's, um, there's diet and lifestyle modification. There's a non-surgical approach and a surgical approach. So for diet and lifestyle modification, this is basically you have to increase your fluid intake. You eat diets rich in roughage and uh, with fiber. For non-surgical, there are some anal suppositories that you can use that have um, steroid. Then you can just keep the anal region clean. You can do something called a sitz bath. This is basically where you get a basin with warm water with a bit of salt and you sit in it for like 15 to 30 minutes, three times a day. This tends to uh, alleviate that blocked vein and actually results in a lot of times the complication of hemorrhoids. Other things that you can do that are non-surgical, basically there's something called banding. You can do uh, also in a hospital setting where you get something called uh, coagulation, photocoagulation. Surgical management, as is expressed, is just where you go into the hospital and they surgically excise that um, hemorrhoid. Thank you for joining our discussion. Um, you can book my services on ponea.com 
and I look forward to engaging with you on our next episode. Thank you.